Hello everyone. Good morning. Okay, sorry for the delay. So let us start today's tutorial. Okay, so to do to so uh, let me see. So ah, uh, I should go into the slideshow. Let me see. So today's tutorial will be on three questions in our homework. So I will give the solutions, and if you have not tried this problem and then you want to still uh, find some time to solve it yeah then perhaps you should stop and uh, watching this video and then come back here later so we will be talking about three questions question number eight question number nine and question number ten okay now for question number eight we are given a eight by eight standard chessboard and then for this problem we have only 31 domino pieces so why do we have just 31 pieces, you will see. So for this problem, we show that no matter how we remove one white and one black square from this board, so we can remove any white and any black, one of, white, one of the whites and one of the blacks, then we can always cover the remaining board exactly by the 31 domino pieces. Yeah, because altogether there are 64 squares on the original board. After the removing two squares, there are 62 left. And then 31 pieces of dominoes is just enough to cover the remaining if it is possible to do so. So we want to show that no matter which two squares we are deleting, as long as they are of different colors, then we can always cover the remaining board using the domino pieces. Now. So, so this problem, you can solve it by using proof by cases. So you can talk about all the different cases that it can happen. So the most naive method is there are 62 different squares and then you talk about all the different combinations of two squares that you are, you are, you are canceling. But this is going to be a, a huge proof. So the problem here is, is there a way that we can simplify the number of cases to study and in fact there is a super clever method that we can just talk about the situation by using one case only and this is what i'm going to show in the next slide okay so this is the answer so so why is it an answer so first of all this is a eight by eight board but then i have drawn some some red lines here so the red lines is like you can think of it as like we are going to cut it here so in that case the 8 by 8 board you can think of it as you can form a cycle of white and black white and black like this so we can have a cycle that goes through exactly once for each of the square and coming back at the beginning so so we can imagine that the the 64 squares on the board, they are arranged in a cycle like this. Okay. Now, what happens if we are removing a white and a black? So we are let's say we are removing this white and let's say we are removing this black. So when we remove a white and a black, so we are cutting the cycle into two parts. One is we cut this white and we cut this black and see what will happen. So we are going to have this part as the first cycle that is being cut and then this is the second part is that okay up to here is that okay but no matter what happens each part they must have uh, this black and white alternating with equal number of blacks and equal number of whites and then we can see that each of the part that is remaining there are two parts remaining right each of the parts can always be covered by domino pieces yeah, domino pieces can can you can just yeah place a piece here a piece here although there is a switch a turn but then we can still put a piece here a piece here so the turn in this cycle doesn't doesn't restrict our 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 covering by using the domino so in that sense we just need to argue that after removal of one white and one black each part of the remaining cycle will be black white black white black white something like this and then they can be covered by domino pieces so that's it so this is the answer for question number eight 
Now for question number nine, it, let me state the question. So suppose that alpha is an angle, and then alpha is within the range zero to one hundred and eighty degrees. We want to show that suppose that alpha is equal to tangent inverse of one over three and tangent inverse one over two, the sum of them. Then alpha is equal to 45 degrees. Now, the intention of this problem is just for fun, so we are not asking you to review your, 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 your tangent inverse uh, computation. What we are really asking you if, is if you have some knowledge about the definition of tangent, then you can really get a proof for this one in a, in a very uh, interesting way or a very simple way. So 45 degrees is a special angle, right? It is, it is obtained by you have a square and then you get a diagonal and then after that you will have a right angled triangle there so that there will be a 45 degree angle formed. So how can we show this is true? So what we are going to do is, what is tangent 1 over 3? The inverse, sorry. What is the inverse of tangent 1 over 3? So the inverse of it is you draw a you draw a triangle, one side of length 1 and one side of length 3, a right-angled triangle. One side 1, one side 3, not on the hypotenuse, but the side. And then the angle formed will be the, the corresponding tangent inverse. So this is somehow we can associate this particular part with an angle by drawing a triangle with one side 1, one side 3. So, so this is another triangle with one side 1, the other side 2. So let's see what, what does this help. Okay, so I claim that we can make use of this to help us solve the question. So first of all, I'm drawing two exactly same triangle, one side 1 and one side 2. They are right angle triangles, but I just put them yeah, in different uh, orientation. Now notice that this is the same as this one in length, yeah, because the two triangles, they are exactly the same, they are congruent. And also, this particular angle is a right angle, am I correct? The reason is that this small angle plus this angle plus this another small angle adds up to 180 degrees, but then this particular angle here is the same as this particular angle, and we see that the small angle plus another small angle plus right angle is 180 degrees. So this is a right angle here. That means that this has to be another right angle. Is that okay? Now, so so somehow you can see kind of a square here, right? If you if you draw a figure completed by doing the other the other way around. And so let's see what will happen. So let's draw one more line here. So we will see that this is the half of a square and this total angle the two of the angles here adds up to 45 degrees so what is the blue angle the blue angle here is tangent inverse of 1 over 3 yeah you have 1 here you have 3 here so this is tangent inverse of 1 over 3 and what is this small angle here this green angle is the same as this green angle and these two green angles are the same so this green angle here is actually tangent inverse of 1 over 2 so that's why we can show this result uh, using a very simple method like this. And finally, okay, so we have question number 10. So we use a notation P sub K to denote the Kth smallest prime. And the question here is asking whether we are multiplying the n smallest primes together and then add 1. Will this always give a prime? Okay, so so we can actually so let me introduce some more words. So for for your for for just for for your interest. Okay, so mathematicians will call the product of the first n primes, the first smallest n primes. They will call it the nth primordial. So it is like when we are multiplying the smallest n positive integers. They are called at uh, the n factorial. So it is not factorial, but it is primordial because we are looking at the smallest not integers but smallest primes. 
and then we will denote this thing p1 multiply p2 multiply p3 up to pn by pn sharp okay so it's not factorial but it's a it's a sharp sign here and then if we add the nth primordial by one if we add it by one then this number is usually called an euclid number now this is called an euclid number because this number is considered in Euclid's proof that there are infinite number of primes that we have seen in the, in the lecture. So that's why we call this an Euclid number. So after these two new definition of terms, then the original question is to ask, is En always a prime? Now recall that Euclid's proof doesn't say that En is always a prime. It just says that if there are finite number of primes, then, then if you consider the product of these primes plus 1, then we will get a contradiction. It still didn't tell whether the product of them plus 1 is a prime or not. So in Euclid's proof, then there is no, no particular uh, saying that this is a prime or this is a not a prime. And indeed, we can, what we can do is we can try the first few cases and check whether all of them are primes or not. So this is what we can do. So E1 is, you get the first prime and then plus 1, so it is 3. 3 is a prime. E2, you get the first two primes multiplied together and then plus 1, which is 7, and again this is a prime. So when you do E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5, interestingly, all of them will give us a prime. But when we get up to e6, then e6 is equal to 30031, and it turns out that this is a number which is not a prime. It can be factorized into 59 times 509. So what does that mean? So we are giving an example that en is not always a prime, or we are calling this a counter example of this statement. So when someone says en is always a prime, then you can claim that you can prove that it is a wrong statement by showing E6 as a counterexample. Now, up to the current status, nobody can tell whether we can still, whether, the, whether this is not a non-prime Euclid number, whether there are infinitely many Euclid number which is not prime. So no one knows. Okay, so it is still an open problem. Okay, so that's all for today's tutorial. And then, yeah, yeah, good luck to your preparation of the exam. And for this week, I will make the OZW recording assignment to you a little bit uh, less so that you can spend or you can focus more on the preparation of your exam. Okay, yeah, see you on Wednesday. Okay? Yes, see you on Wednesday. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Have a nice day.